Nothing makes us developers happier than an error message, as long as it's a different error than the previous one. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to deal with errors in PowerShell. Let's have a look. Hello everyone, my name is Kamil and today we're going to talk about PowerShell and errors because let's face it, as developers we deal with errors every day. This is our bread and butter. And nothing makes us happier when we get a different error message because that means we made a progress of some sense, or at least we've changed the behavior of our code enough to cause a different error. So let's dig in. Here we go. So what I prepared today, I prepared eight files and I prepared separate files because well when it froze, when application dies, when your script you know ends abruptly then it won't carry on. So I actually had to break it down into smaller files so actually we can do some work and see what happens. So anyways, PowerShell has really two concepts of errors. One is terminating and that is when we are throwing and this is probably the most popular type of errors you will see there and also there is concept of non-terminating errors which I will show you in the next file. Non-terminating error we just simply write the output stream to the error stream because PowerShell have I believe seven streams apart from normal, verbose, error, information and some others I don't remember now. So it's actually quite rich. No, normally you have only standard and error stream, that's it. So here we are a bit richer, which we will see later on we are, might actually be not that good thing or maybe depending on which way you're looking at and from where you or from which angle you're working with it. Anyways, what we start we start with a very simple function start die and all it does it just throws yeah so we just want to actually see what happens and the application in fact died now if you see this one you can you probably guessed by now this is new powershell in new powershell that is powershell core which currently is on the version 7 they introduced a lot of nicer error messages so old powershell is not so nice i mean you can see obviously deal with errors there but it's just slightly different. Well, hey, I'm going to show you what's currently there, which is, well, as of now, 2023 and PowerShell 7.3. Okay, so now we've seen what terminating error does and it's simply nothing else we run after it. It just dies. We didn't handle it, it just happened and, well, life. So now let's have a look what we got here. We got three lines, yeah? First one is I just write error, then I am writing something to the host, then I'm going writing error again, but now I'm telling it to stop. And then, well, I'm trying to write something else. So let's see what's gonna happen. Can you guess which line we, we are actually going to terminate? If you thought that we die on life three, then you were correct. So this is the concept of non-terminating error. We have write error, so we can see I just wrote, but hey, I just carry on. Yeah, you didn't tell me to stop or whatever, nothing. So I carry on. However, when we did error action stop, then, well, it stopped effectively. And every function, every, at least advanced function, every commandlet will have that parameter. So it's actually something given to you from PowerShell. You can just tell it or action stop. But if you think about it, writing this to every command that might fail is annoying. Yeah, especially when we get to the point of production code, then we certainly don't want something to, you know, break error. Let's say fail to commit to database or connect to database and actually keep carry on trying on. Yeah, you fail to do something, talk to database. There's no point of retrieving data or saving data to database. So we should really stop at this point. And that's where we get into the point of something called error action preference. So error action preference is a global variable, one of the default variables that we have in PowerShell and it drives the default behavior of the, in that case, of what happens to the error. In that case, it's continue. So when it is continue, it will just, what we've seen, non-terminated error, I just, you know, YOLO through life, YOLO through all my errors. Oh, well, we can do that. So usually what you end up doing, especially when, again, you go in production, you will set it to stop. So as you see in the previous one, we said error action stop. In this case, I'm telling you globally, whenever there's error, you just stop. So let's see now what's going to happen now. 
So we see we printed out line continue, and then we see this is third failure, but we never ever reach that line. Yep, that's why. That that's why setting this at the very top level will ensure your code actually will stop. And this is really default. I just I don't think I run any scripts without that setting at the top. Okay. But obviously, obviously error happens and we might actually expect that something might happen or we might just expect something might not succeed. Yeah. So we can actually handle the code. So as you see in the very first case, I showed you that we throw in the error so we can actually catch it. So that means I can actually handle it. Yeah. In case you error out, you do this instead. And another benefit of doing try catch is that when normally I just do throw, when my code errors, it will just terminate my whole execution. My whole script will just die at this point. If I actually have this within the catch statement, it will carry on to the next line. So I might handle it, I might do something else. Obviously I might also tell explicitly stop at this point, but it doesn't mean it will stop at this point. So for the title, we just reset preference to the default. And there is another simple function that has a one parameter which is, well, to die. So if I just say, you know, minus die, it will then pretty much die at this point. So we're going just to write something to the screen. Then we're going to, if, if that parameter is present, we actually throw. Otherwise, we might be actually, well, be able to finish. So what's going to happen in here? Let's, let's enable this code for now. And we are going to start. And as we can see, We've entered the function, yeah, because I'm caught effectively what when you press play, yeah, PowerShell will just go through all the lines. And at this point, I'm, I'm telling it go run this application and, well, telling this to throw. It throws, it never went any further. Yeah, so what we can do instead? We can instead try to do try and catch. So that's the, that's the way it works. We have a try squarely brackets, then the code we're trying, yeah, something we actually want to run. And I very often find myself when I have my like a main function, yeah, that my entry point, so to speak, to my code, that everything will be, will be within try statement, and there'll be just one big catch. And in the case there's error, something inside fails, I can just go and then look to it and things like that. So I don't need to actually handle every single case. It's just one of the practices. But anyways, so we're going now to actually tell you what, let's just run this. Let's, let, let's say that we'll run now, yeah? So at this point, you can see we are happily working. We finish the job and then we've reached the end. Cool, isn't it? So if we now will terminate at this point, I tell you to throw at this point, what's happened? We've reached that line and then we hit the error. Yeah, it's throwing. So now PowerShell went out and looked, is there any catch statement? Yes, there is. So look, look what happened. It re it's actually handled this code. Yeah, so it just did this. Then when we do dollar sign underscore or PS item, yeah, this is actually PS item. This is effectively the message that was that was written. So what I've done, I just rather than throwing the thing, I just passed on the information that was in the in the error message. And then we've reached the end. So this is what how what we can do with try and catch. Yeah. The case that when we were in, we were not in try catch, I didn't catch the error, it just terminated at this point. It never ever reached the final line. Here because I am handling this code. I'm handling this error, therefore it carries on. It does what I'm telling it to do. What else we can do? We can refrow the error. So if I will just punch in within the catch statement, another throw statement, it will then carry on and actually will still error out. As we can see, we didn't reach the end and we threw. So now you might wonder why bother? Yeah, why do I handle this? 
but I still end up terminating. It is not easy just to terminate. And at this point, I might, for example, because I know it failed, I might actually go and dump some more debug information into the log. Or maybe I might send an email that, hey, this is died, or I can do something else. Obviously, we're still dying, but I can actually do something more useful what will help me later on to diagnose this issue, yeah, to troubleshoot it. That's why we can refer. And if I really even like I don't care it dies, I can even do something like that. I know this code might die, but I don't want to do anything. Yeah, I'm just telling PowerShell, yeah, I'm aware of it. Do nothing. Yeah, usually you end up writing code here, do nothing. Because that, well, that might happen. Okay, let's look at the next one. So obviously we've seen try, this is the, this function is the same like the previous one, but we've seen catch and there's also finally. And what is the difference between doing try catch and finally? Finally always runs, regardless whether we will error out or if we will be successful, finally always runs. So again, Open database connections, we want to close them. Open log files, we want to close them. Any other things that, you know, we create some files, we maybe need to do some cleaning up after the work. Yep, because we have some temporary files. We always want to get rid of them, that's why I leave mess behind. That's why we always, well, that's why we can always say fina finally always do this or do that. So in the first example, we just run. So we see happy working, job done. And then we obviously we didn't throw. So at this point we got to the point of finally, where we are looking up office. And let's now throw. And we can see again we are we've got to the point of rewriting the line. We locked up the office and it's still and it's still through. So finally run always. You can even run finally without catch. So this is legal code. I have finally. I'm not handling anything, but I, you, I always want you to do something. Yeah. So with try, you always need to have either catch or finally or both of them. You cannot have try for sake of having try because there's not much point of it. Okay. So now you obviously had some errors and PowerShell, I mean PowerShell, now I want to actually investigate, I want to actually get into the code. I want to actually, you know, see what's happened, what's actually through it, under which line it died, things like that. So let's throw something on purpose. And PowerShell 7 introduced get error commanded. So it will give me quite a lot of detail about expand it about you know for example type uh, text bunch of information that might be actually helpful to diagnosing what's happened you have a stack trace which means stack trace is the what which co which commandlets which functions that will call by call actually what led us to the point it failed so if you're debugging this is useful PowerShell also holds special variable called error. So if I write this now, you will run me, see, all the errors I had so far, they are listed there. And always the first one, that is zero indexed, is the latest one. Okay, so it's it's going in reverse, rather than adding them to the end of the array, it's always add them to the front and then moves everything in with inside. But Obviously, we can list all of them. This is probably not that much useful, but we can so investigate what is there. So, for example, with invocation info, actually, what, how my code got called? Yeah, uh, at which line? At which line the code through? So this is kind of useful when you are investigating actually which line offended the code what's happened. We can actually see the exception itself, which has a bunch of information. The message, 
just a message if you want to. This is actually default when you when seen before when we did uh, the last sign underscore PS item. This is actually what gets printed by default. Stack trace and something that is really useful when we want to catch a throw. But in that case, well, we, we have errors, so we want to catch. When we want to catch specific errors, then we need to, we can actually do it based on the type because errors are objects at the end of the day. Yep, so if we look now, we can. For example, for example, catch something specific. So what we have here, I'm doing the invoke call to some website that doesn't exist. And then my next statement in my trade is to try to find some file. And now you see I have multiple catch statements because we can have multiple catch statements. Or I can have, you know, try within catch within catch. I can obviously nest them if I want to. But in that case, I'm saying if you have a this kind of error, which is for HTTP request exception, do this. If there is catch statement without anything, that means catch any error is generic. So that's what we had before. So obviously now I arrowed on the on the uh, on the invoke called yeah on the how is this called HTTP request exception. Therefore, it picked HTTP request exception. Yeah, if I could spell HTTP request exception. It didn't go that far. If, however, I will make this code to work, as long as google.com works, you see, generic error. Right host, generic error. So in that case, it ignored this one because obviously we are not there, but it still got caught in generic rule. So I can be specific. You know, if folder is not there, you can create the folder. If file is not there, you can create it. If you don't have rights to access that folder, do something else and like, and like that. And we can also throw specific errors. Oh. So if I run this code now, I'm throwing access violation. Yeah, that, yeah, you're not happy working anymore. This is, yeah, violation. And if I now will go investigate it, oh, funny enough, it doesn't say. So if I go get error, we can see the type is in fact what I threw. So I can still use it. And the final one, because often in PowerShell, we need to work with applications. Yeah, CLI applications or any other applications. We don't only work with commandlets and functions. And the problem with applications is they often will report you error, but they will not do it to the error stream. They will only do something what is called an exit code. So every application that runs, we have an exit code, and this is and it, there is a rule of thumb that's kind of general consensus that error code zero means it was successful. Okay. So in other words, if we are going to look at this code, yeah, for example, checking here if I have Git installed, because well, it's cost platform I was looking for something that you might have. And I'd imagine if you're writing code, you must have Git. So I'm looking for the Git application. And for example, if I run this line, what what happens? Git obviously reports by that this command, well, it doesn't work, but it just actually works. Yeah, it just prints out. It just prints out the output to the normal stream. So PowerShell, as far as PowerShell is concerned, yeah, nothing right here. Yeah? I'm happy. So there is one special variable called last exit code. So as we can see. 129. That means it probably failed. Let's pick a command that definitely is there. So we have git version, last exit code, zero. Okay, so command that doesn't exi exist, last exit code, 129. So what do we do? We run our command, 
And straight after running this command, we can just do last exit code. And if that exit code is not zero, then we can throw. As we can see, Git has failed. So there we go. And if you want, for example, when you are writing scripts for SCCM, SCCM or Intune, or probably any other deployment solutions, they're expecting specific exit code from your PowerShell. And you can, for example, run your code. Your code might be not, you know, throw some errors, might do report back some errors, but as long as it manages to reach the last line or return or exit, you will exit zero. So effectively, the HCCM will be not aware it failed. So what you can do, you can use special code special code, special word called exit, and then the number you want. So this one, this way we can actually force PowerShell to exit with specific exit code. So obviously when I am successful, I can do explicitly exit zero at the end of my script. But you know, if there's failure, I can say exit 23. That will means it will error with 23. And at this point, the CCM will know it failed. Uh, when PowerShell will reach the throw, statement, you will then exit with one by default. So you have something of that, but if you need to be specific, you absolutely can be. All right, that's all I have today for you. Let's sum up. There we have it. First video of 2023, how to handle errors in PowerShell. I hope you find it informative and you learned something new and that you won't be using if statements anymore when you're trying to catch errors. Well, I'm just joking, but yeah. Doing try catch is often the, the best way to, well, the best way, the only way really to handle your errors. And as you can see, PowerShell provides you try catch and finally, which are really useful. So really what I often do on my scripts at the very be beginning is error action preference stop. And then I call my invoking function, my main function within the try. So if anything happens there, within that try block, I can then just throw it and it will automatically get caught by my function, which will then probably report this back to database or somewhere else. We see there are many ways of handling, handling this. I found it to be the best balance between having code that actually we control it, because let's face it, the code underneath really doesn't know what the code above, you know, the code that invokes it wants to do. So if it throws, and I don't specify there, I don't I don't specify try within my main try. <laughs> yeah, we get into a bit of inception. Then then I will just throw it because I, I didn't foresee it. So I can at least have this kind of nice error handling baked in into the application. But hey, hope you enjoyed and I hope I see you on the next video. Bye bye.